So let's talk about the War Powers Act. The Gulf and Iraq War authorizations, as people may or may not realize, they're still on the books and they're still being used in many cases. You and Senator Young introduced legislation to repeal the 1991 and 2002 authorizations for use of military force. Why? Well, first, these are congressional powers under Article I, and too many Congresses of both parties have abdicated this responsibility to presidents of both parties, usually because they don't have the backbone to, like, put their name on the line when it comes to war. So both Todd and I believe Article I matters. Um, Congress should be deeply involved in this. It's our job. Second, Iraq's not an enemy anymore. These, these were war authorizations against an Iraq ultimately leading to the toppling of Saddam Hussein and the Ba'athist Party. Iraq is now a security partner of the United States in the fight against ISIS, in the fight against Iranian bellicose activity in the region. Why have a war authorization against a nation that is your partner? Um, and finally, I think it sends a good message. A great thing about America, we have had a capacity to take nations we've been at war with and then end up as allies, Germany, um, the UK, Japan, and it's good to send that message that a nation that's been in war with the United States, we're open to making the relationship better, and other nations have been too. I think that's an important message to say. Why is it important uh, to you? I mean, I, I, I think that theoretically, uh, a lot of Republicans believe in a strong executive branch and don't, I don't know that that's you, that that, that describes you, but and that the legislative yeah. branch um, should defer. What's your take? Well, you're right. A lot of Republicans do. And I think Tim did a, a really good job of outlining the legal arguments, the moral arguments, and some near-term national uh, security considerations. Let me focus on the latter. Every Republican agrees we should counter Iran. And there is no more co important country in that effort than Iraq. So we need to partner with the newly formed government of Iraq. Prime Minister al-Sudani is prepared to work with uh, the Americans, but more importantly, Middle East partners uh, throughout the region to ensure that the terrorist state of Iran doesn't form a land bridge through Iraq into Syria, down to Lebanon, uh, endangering Israel and beyond. And, and so the best way we can do that right now is to affirm our support, our friendship uh, with the people of Iraq. But, but he also points out, and, and it, it's true, one of the reasons this hasn't happened is because it's a lot easier just to defer to the president of the United States. And if things go great, you wave the flag, and if things go bad, then you can criticize it and not actually have to, as a lawmaker, take a position. Well, we've been, we've been doing that for decades now, and frankly, giving up our, our uh, legal prerogatives, but also failing to live up to our responsibilities, something Tim spoke to, uh, as, as members of Congress. We need to make hard decisions, uh, hard decisions about when you enter conflicts, how those conflicts uh, are, are carried on, which we do through oversight responsibilities, and ultimately, after we authorize military force, we need to deauthorize force when a conflict is ended. That's what Tim and I are focused on here. Is it going to happen? Is it going to succeed this time? I, I feel very, very good about it. We, we filed today with uh, 22 sponsors in the Senate, 11 Democrats, 11 Republicans, which means we have the votes to get it through the Senate. And I predict when we get to a floor vote, it'll be more like two thirds that we'll get to. Um, and in, while the Senate is usually slow and the House is fast, this may be one where the Senate will act first. The House patrons on this are really interesting. Barbara Lee, Chip Roy, Tom Cole, Abigail Spanberger, very broad ideological group. Um, and, and I'll just go back to something Todd said. we got to have backbone. Todd had backbone when he enlisted in the Marine Corps. My son had backbone when he went into the Marine Corps. If, if our troops have the backbone to say they're going to defend this country, then Congress can't be chicken in, in making decisions about war, peace, and diplomacy. We've got to put our name on the line. Just to illustrate how absurd this is, I entered the United States Navy right after high school. That was 1990. A few months later, the 1991 yeah. first Gulf War authorization. Congress has not repealed it since then. It's time we get back you into the war. You still look 18, 90, 19 years old. <laughs> Thank you so much. Th you have a future in politics. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please don't. don't. Uh, thanks to both of you. Really appreciate it. And stay Thank in you. touch, uh, and we'll right. keep covering this.